today we are taking a look at the brand new Atom Cube RX50 from Pilot Cine. So let's get into it. Hey, what's up? I'm Scott and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please do consider subscribing for more no-nonsense tutorials and reviews. So getting right into it, uh, I'll put up some of the specs on screen for you now to read through some of uh, the uh, light specs in terms of the functions and features and things like that, as well as the color output readings in terms of CRI, TLCI, all that good stuff. Uh, so you can kind of browse through that. You can pause it if you want to read a little bit more. I'll also put up some uh, results in terms of the output, how bright it is, how powerful it is. Uh, and I will also, either now or at some point in the video, depending on how things go, I'll put up uh, just a couple examples of using this as a key light, for example, uh, by itself and pushing it through some more diffusion, uh, just so you can see in terms of camera settings uh, how much output it has. And maybe that's a little bit more of a realistic way to, to get a good understanding of just how bright it is. Now, of course, uh, not everybody's going to be using this as a key light, and I think this light, uh, in terms of power and size and functions and everything, all that it has built into it and all that it is physically, is really good at kind of doing a lot of different jobs. So later in the video, we'll talk about uh, all of the different ways that I personally will be planning to use this, but we're going to split this up into a few different sections today. First off, we'll just take a real quick look at what you get uh, in the kit uh, in terms of the bag, what's included, and uh, just a basic overview of the light itself in terms of the design and how it works. Then we'll go through the menu. I'll just show you uh, what's built into here, uh, how you can control it, how the controls, the buttons, the dials, everything on there works, and what the different modes are and what they look like. And then, like I said, I'll talk about the different ways that this can be used, the ways that I have used it, the ways that I will be using it. Uh, and along the way, throughout all of those sections, of course, I'll be giving my feedback uh, in terms of what I personally think about this light, the design, the quality, everything like that. So let's jump right into the first section and take a look at what you get. So obviously, I've taken the light out of the bag, and we'll take a look at the bag in just a second. But if you take a look at it from the side, you can kind of get an idea. Right now, it's just sitting on the table, leaned back on this yoke, uh, and this yoke and these barn doors are included. There's a couple different versions uh, of this light, and I think that the battery plate is one of the big differences between the different versions. I highly recommend you get the version with the battery plate because it really just extends the usability of this a whole lot more. There's a built-in battery as well uh, that will last you about an hour and a half or two hours on full power if it's fully charged. Uh, but being able to swap out an external battery uh, without having to rely on cables is, is also really, really great in a light that it's this size. And this is one of those uh, compact mini batteries. This will give it another few hours. Uh, depending on the size though, of course, you can run it for a lot longer than that. So the yoke can be completely removed if you just slide it off like that. Very, very easy to do. Slide it back in. Tighten it down, very, very easy. Also, there's no attachment on the bottom here right now for uh, putting this on top of a light stand, but there is that attachment included. We'll get into that when we take it out of the bag. Barn doors here also do have, maybe you can see it on this overhead camera, a kind of diffusion sheet uh, built into them. It is removable. Um, uh, you need some little screws to remove it, but it is removable. And also the barn doors themselves are removable, so you can use either only the diffusion or only the barn doors if you really wanted to but it's all built into one unit. And that actually is able to slide further away from the surface of the light. So right now, even though there is that diffusion on there, I think you can still see the LED uh, beads on there, diodes on there. But if you loosen these screws, there's two at the top and there's two at the bottom. And you can actually slide that whole barn doors and diffusion section away from the surface of the light there for about maybe an inch. And if you take a look at it, let me hold this, it's not tightened in yet. Uh, you can see that now that diffusion does effectively uh, diffuse those little LED diodes. So, so especially if you're closer to your subject and you don't want to deal with that multiple shadow effect that uh, LEDs can, LED panels can sometimes have, pushing that diffusion a little bit further away is enough to take care of that and it will diffuse it really nicely right there. Now, of course, you could also completely remove all four of these screws and just pull this entire diffusion off if you only want to use it as a panel, uh, either for the compact size or for whatever reason, um, for a little bit more output because it's not pushing through that diffusion. Uh, you can completely remove that very easy. Just remove these four screws, boom, you're done. And again, this yoke can also be removed just like that. So very, very modular light in terms of how you want to mount it and uh, what kind of accessories, uh, diffusion, control, light spill control, etc. you want to have on here. 
very, very uh, versatile in that way. Now, if you do go ahead and remove the yoke and you want to just put it straight onto a light stand or something, you do have a screw thread down at the bottom here. This is a 3 8 inch screw thread with a quarter 20 adapter in it, so you can remove the adapter and you have a 3 8 inch screw thread there as well if you need that. On the top here, I also do want to mention there is this little uh, grate for the internal fan. I've never heard the fan. I can't hear anything right now. Uh, I've never noticed it. It's never been loud enough for me to hear, even when using this on full power for quite a long time. So don't be worried about that. On the side here, you have the power switch. Of course, you have a USB port here, which I believe does actually let this work as a kind of power bank if you wanted to use that. Uh, I've never really used it in all honesty, and I believe you can also uh, use this to provide power for the light if you have a power delivery device that's powerful enough. For example, a laptop charger uh, power bank, I believe, will be powerful enough. I've, again, never used that personally, but you do have that port there. You also have uh, this uh, USB-C multi-port. Uh, this is for DMX control. Honestly, I'm not really that familiar with DMX control, but you do have that here. And then you do have a little DC barrel down at the bottom. This is for charging the internal battery or also just running it off of mains power. Uh, you can use that. And again, that cable is included inside the bag. We'll take a look at that in a second. And then the back of the light is pretty simple as well. Again, we've got the V-mount plate on this one in particular, uh, but you've got a little display screen here. You've got a couple buttons, a dial with a center button as well as your little uh, color guide here at the bottom. So in terms of the light itself, this thing is solid. It's all metal. It feels really well made and also feels really well polished, I guess you could say, really well finished. There's no sharp edges or unfinished edges anywhere, even on these barn doors, for example. I have dealt with lights before, uh, a little bit cheaper maybe, that have some rough edges here and there, but this is, again, a very well polished light, very professional feeling light, very rugged feeling light. I wouldn't want to drop it, but I do have confidence that even if I did, it could take a little bit of a beating and uh, still keep on kicking. It's a little bit heavy. Uh, I'll put the exact weight on the screen now, but again, keep in mind there's also a built-in battery in here that will power this light at 100% for almost two hours, and this is a fairly bright light, so for, you know, how slim it is, it's basically the same slimness as one of those smaller pocket lights when you take everything off, of course, the barn doors and everything. For its size, there's a lot built into here, and it's all metal, uh, so that weight is kind of understandable. And of course, if you slap a V-mount battery on the back, it's going to add to that weight a little bit more. But this is a very, very serious feeling light. Moving on to the bag that you get with this. Uh, it is a soft bag, but it is protective enough. Um, and there's actually a lot of organization in here. So on the front right away, you can see that there are two zippers. One that uh, at this moment just has the little card in there. And the other one, if I can get to the zipper, you've got a shoulder strap in there that can hook onto these little uh, attachments on the side. I'm gonna tuck that back in there for now. So this second uh, pocket goes all the way to the bottom. If you wanted to put like folded up diffusion paper or um, something in there, of course, that'd be a great spot for that. Or if you just have some little extras to carry along with you, great spot for that. Although it's just a soft case, the zippers and everything really do feel really, really nice as well. They're nice and smooth, good quality all around. On the back side, you actually still have one more zipper. And again, this runs the full back side of the case. So if you have even more that you wanna bring along with you together with this light, you can do that very easily. On the top here, there's actually these metal handles which have a kind of, um, I'm assuming it's fake leather, little snap type of uh, grip wrap around there. Very soft feeling, I guess you could say, but the handles are nice and strong metal handles. And then you've got the main zipper here. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see inside of there, but inside of the main compartment, you have this uh, flap here, which will open up this main section. And that's where the light is going to slide into. And then you can cover it up with this strap so that way it doesn't fall out. And then in the front here, this is probably really tricky to see, but basically you've got these two pockets here as well as the open section uh, right in the middle there. So what I've got in there, first up is the little adapter to put this on top of a light stand. We'll show you how that works in a second. And then I've got the cable to charge it or to power it from mains power. I'm broken into two sections in those other two pockets and that's it. Again, although it's a soft case, it is fairly padded in the front and the back and also the section in between. Um, so this is, I think, protective enough. Again, the light is built like a tank, so I'm not too worried about it, but that's the carry case. All right, so this little adapter here uh, is meant to put this onto a light stand using this yoke. So you can see here, maybe there's a little hole in there and you've got this screw right in here as I drop it. So basically you can just put this through the hole 
and then screw it on and boom. Now you can put this onto a light stand and because it does have this hole this way and this way, you could of course put this onto a light stand straight uh, as you typically would or also uh, put it on this way which would be good because sometimes these lights, if you have it this way on top of a light stand and you have the barn doors on there, it can limit how much you can tilt it down. So if you want to get that nice 45 degree angle for like, you know, the typical key light position, it's going to be hard to tilt it down uh, because of those barn doors. So instead, you would mount it sideways like this onto the light stand, and then you can tilt it uh, right to that angle a lot more easily. So being able to mount this both ways is actually pretty uh, a pretty big deal for me personally. Now one of my few complaints about this light is that this uh, little attachment here is not designed in any way that it kind of locks. So it could spin pretty easily uh, like this. If you know you don't tighten it down quite enough, there's no kind of ridges on this to kind of hold it in place around this bar, for example. There's benefits and drawbacks to that, of course. The benefit is if you want to go at some weird angle for whatever reason, you could do that uh, because it's not limited to that one locked in position. The downside, of course, is if you don't tighten it enough, it could come loose a little bit uh, easily, I guess you could say. So depending on how you look on it, uh, that could be a drawback, but that's one of my few complaints. Now one of my other few complaints uh, is when it comes to this cable. And so again, this cable, of course, I guess you could say is mainly meant to charge the light since there is an internal battery and you do have a battery plate for external batteries on that. And that is highly, uh, the way that I'd highly recommend to use it is with one of those batteries. It's really going to maximize the, the benefit of having such a compact, be a powerful light. Um, but this cable is a little bit shorter than I would like it to be if you're going to be using the light while having it plugged in. So this section here, it's probably about a meter. I'll measure it more <laughs> accurately and put that on screen. And then the section from the brick to the wall is probably about another meter or so, maybe just over that. Um, so, you know, it could have been longer, but depends how you're going to use the light. So there's complaint number two. Okay, so I think that about covers it for what's included with this light uh, and my thoughts on it. Uh, again, like I said, it's really solid. It's well made. Everything feels nice and smooth uh, with the exception of those two little complaints that I had. It's, it's nearly a perfect light for what it is. Um, so we're going to move on and talk about uh, the control, how it works, uh, and what's built into it. Okay, so one thing that I think is worth highlighting is how long a light takes to start up. So if I switch it on, Boom, takes about one or two seconds. So it starts up fairly quickly. So not bad at all there. So we're going to start off in CCT mode, which is your white light mode. And you can see there's quite a lot of information on the screen here. Uh, you got your little battery icon there, your color temperature, of course, your intensity, and a few other things. Some of this, I think, is going to um, expand in terms of customizability uh, with the mobile app. And there is a mobile app. And I'm going to hold off on that and not include it in this video. I want to focus on the light itself in this video, but there is a mobile app and it is incredibly full featured already, but I think that it's going to be developed even a little bit more. So I want to hold off on that for the moment. Um, but things like this linear um, marking here, I think that's going to possibly uh, be more customizable from the app side of things. DFS, I'm actually not too sure about. But, you know, GM, for example, we've got a green magenta shift, so that's good as well. To take control of this light is very, very simple. Uh, if you, you've got your dial here, if you have your color temperature highlighted, then it's going to affect your color temperature. Um, clicking the set is like your settings button, so it goes from color temperature to DFS. You can turn that off or on, and then it goes over to your green magenta shift, which you can adjust there. Again, really, really nice that you can dial in that green magenta shift just to help it so that way it will match other lights if you're mixing lights. So if one of them has a shift or not, if your existing ambient light has a shift or not, you can use that to really, really accurately match and mix lights, which I, I always love. Uh, and then if you click setting again, it's going to go through those three settings in the white light mode. Clicking the center button here is actually what's going to jump into your intensity. And then you can adjust that right there. So it goes in 1% increments, but starts off from 5% in white light mode. So let's go up to about 25 for now. Your white light goes from 2,500 up to, there we go, 8,500. And you've got 100K jumps there in between. So. That's your white light mode. Clicking mode will bring you into the menu where you can go into the next mode, which is HSI mode. This is a very straightforward way, I think, to uh, approach uh, colored light. You've also got RGB mode if you look in the menu there, but we're gonna go through HSI mode first. 
HSI is just controlling your hue, saturation, and intensity. Uh, that's what the HSI stands for. So hue will go through this full 360 degrees of color here. If you scroll through that, again, pressing setting will bring you over to your saturation. You can go up and down in 1% increments. We're going to keep it at 100 for now. And then if you click the setting button, it jumps between those two again, like with the white light mode, clicking the center button will bring you to the intensity and you can jump up and down in that. In HSI or color mode, it'll start off at 10% and then you can jump up in 1% increments. So we'll keep that again at 25% for now. Going through the menu to the next is RGBDT mode. So uh, we've got daylight and tungsten control specifically as well. So not only you know RGBW, which um, some lights do have, which lets you control the RGB plus the white light mixture, this will let you control the RGB plus specifically daylight and tungsten, which is a lot more control than I've seen on other lights. So you still get your intensity control down the bottom, which will uh, you can access from that little center button. We've got zeros all across the board now, so it doesn't do anything. The setting button will jump through each of these individually. So if we go through daylight, you know, you can pump up the daylight diodes only, and then boom, you've just got daylight light which is nice, I guess, if you want to do it that way. I don't know why you really would, but you can. Same for tungsten. If you want just a purely tungsten light source from this mode, you can do that as well. Let's dial that back. And then, of course, you can go in through your reds, through your greens, and through your blues. And, of course, you can mix them to make different color combinations. And you can dial in those daylight and tungsten bulbs to mix together with that as well. So that's your RGBDT mode. Again, kind of rare uh, and unique and a lot more detailed in how they implemented it than you see in a lot of other lights. Next up, we've got our effects mode, and this is going to bring up a submenu. And within the submenu, you have lightning, color cycle, police light, fire, and television. Um, and that looks a little bit limited uh, for what's built into light itself. Again, you're going to have more control over all of this with the app. Um, but these do have submenus. So for example, with lightning, you can click that and you have mode A, B, and C. So you can see as I choose mode A, this is what we get. And you can adjust the speed and intensity of all these effects. So you can really customize that uh, how you need for maybe matching your sound effects or whatever it is. That's mode A. Then you've got mode B, which is kind of another flashing pattern there. And then you've got mode C, which is more of a pulse. So uh, although it's labeled as one of the modes for lightning, it is a little bit different there. Once you're in the submenu, pressing mode again, we'll jump back to the previous menu and go over to uh, color cycle. And you've got some choices there as well. You've got your full color, which will cycle through, of course, the full color range. And again, you can adjust the speed and intensity. You've also got just red which will kind of pulse red like that. And then you've got your party mode there under that submenu. So again, you can adjust the speed. Let's pump this up because it's a party. It's supposed to be quick. There we go. It's kind of like the color cycle, uh, full color mode that we talked about. But you've got some options under that as well. Press mode to go back. Police light will bring you to a couple of choices as well. Blue, red, blue, white, uh, red, white, blue, blue. I, I can't even remember if I'm repeating here, but you've got some choices there as well. Let's take a look at blue, red, and again, let's pump up the speed. There we go. Press mode again to go back, and then we've got our fire. We've got, again, a couple of choices for a flame, a full-on flame, as well as a candle. So flame is going to look like this, more or less. You can see kind of on the table here underneath, and then candle. There's maybe some slight differences there, but uh, you do have the options. And then television as well, you've got a couple patterns. So you've got TV1, and this can go really quick. This is 255% speed, so you can pull that back, of course. Um, but let's take a look at TV2. This is actually going to have RGB color built into it, which I've always said, this is actually the first light that I've seen that has RGB colors built into the TV mode, which makes sense to me because TV is not just black and white. Um, so it's cool that they do have both of those options, depending on how you want the effect to look. So jumping back, uh, you've then got your system set up. So you've got your Bluetooth, um, your auto power off options. You can turn this so that way it will auto power off if you want to save battery life, for example. Uh, you can reset your Bluetooth if you need to. You've got a factory reset and you can check your version here. Um, and this is still at 1.00 for now for me. And then you've got your options for USB 
uh, A, the USB-A port, you can turn that five volt output for the uh, kind of power bank function on or off right here. So in terms of actually operating it, uh, it's very simple, very easy. Again, there's only a few buttons on here. My one complaint uh, is something that just takes a little bit of getting used to. For example, this setting button will jump between these settings, except it doesn't go over to that intensity setting. To do that, you've got to put push this button. But again, this dial does have you know that plus and minus marking on it, so I guess it kind of makes sense. And then to jump back to one of these other ones, it's not the center button, it's setting again, and it will jump back into those other settings. So two different buttons to kind of control if you're uh, adjusting these settings or if you're adjusting the intensity setting, you click this. That took me a little while to get used to, like what? why isn't it going over to intensity when I'm pressing the setting button? It seems like it should have cycled through. Every other light that I've used is only one button to cycle through everything, including intensity. I guess it's nice in a way that they have this separated, but it does take a little bit of getting used to if you're not expecting that. So with a light this size, it's uh, about the same size as four of those little pocket lights. So using it as a key light is definitely going to depend on a couple of things. One of those things is how close it is to your subject. If you're framed really tight, you can get this in fairly close to your subject and by itself with this built-in diffusion, it would definitely do okay, I think, as a key light. But of course, with its power, you could also push it through a second layer of diffusion, larger diffusion to get a softer key light if that's what you're looking for. So. It's powerful enough, but again, it's really going to depend on how far you are from your subject, how your tight your framing is, and uh, things like the balance with the other lights in your frame. If you have other lights that are more powerful in your frame and this has to act as a key light, then it might struggle in some points. But if you have other lights in your frame that are uh, rather low in intensity, then this could do just fine. So there's a lot of factors that will go into whether or not this is going to make a good key light, but it could absolutely work as a key light by itself or with a very minimal uh, modification, just a sheet of diffusion paper uh, on top of this, uh, the barn doors, be very easy. You've got a little bit more size to it if you open these barn doors and then tape a sheet of diffusion there. I personally won't be using it as a key light most of the time, but you absolutely could. And I already have, not necessarily for me, but I've used it as a key light on a couple of shoots for smaller, closer up um, product shots, things like that, uh, where you can get the light in nice and close. I didn't even have to dial it all the way up to the strongest power but it does have that potential to be a powerful light, especially when you're up that close. If you're shooting slow motion, things like that, which I sometimes or often, I guess you could say, I often do when shooting uh, little close up product shots or even like little details for cooking videos or, or commercials that I do. Uh, it's nice to shoot in slow motion and this does have enough output to uh, balance with that exposure if it's you know up, up close on your subject and it's still nice and diffused if you use this built-in diffusion. So I have used it that way and well not necessarily for myself, I will continue to use it as a key light in some situations when I'm shooting uh, things like that. Especially because of this RGB effect though, it also makes a great background light if you had like a plain gray uh, backdrop and you wanted to throw some color onto it. Uh, this is small enough that you could hide it away behind you pretty easily and then it could throw that nice splash of color onto a gray backdrop. Um, it could just sit on the floor, the, again the way it's sitting on this table right now, or you could put it on a low stand, but it's nice to not need a stand necessarily. You can take it out and just use it right away. So I'm probably going to use it like that quite often when I want to have some kind of colorful background. Of course, it doesn't need to be color. It can also be using the white light mode, um, but it's very good light for something like that. And again, because of its size and control with these barn doors, it could also make a really good hair light if you need to throw a little splash of color on somebody from behind. And you could use these barn doors to make sure that it's not falling onto the camera lens as well. So it's gonna make a great light for something like that, a little rim light, a little kicker light, whatever you wanna call it, a hair light. It's gonna be a great light for that as well. And again, you have that bi-color design, so if you want to have some color contrast, you could dial it down to contrast with your key light. Uh, if you wanted to have some kind of cool colored uh, kicker light, you could do that as well with the RGB mode. Again, there are also special effects built in here, so you could use it to create some kind of uh, lightning effect, or if you wanted to have police lights outside of a, a window, for example, you could use this to uh, have that flashing outside of the window. Uh, it's battery powered, so again, using it outside is totally fine. You don't have to worry about where your power is gonna come from. Even if it dies, you can just throw a V-mount battery on there, and most videographers will have plenty of those sitting around. So it's great for using it uh, indoors or outdoors. It doesn't have to be tied down in a studio with a cable. Also, because you can very easily and quickly take off the yoke, take off the barn doors, uh, it ends up having that very slim profile. So you could tuck it away somewhere very tight uh, if you don't have a lot of space or if you need to kind of hide it. 
Um, so again, combined with those special effects, that, that can be very, very useful. So in terms of price, uh, this light is not the cheapest in the market, and so I know it's not going to fall into everybody's budget. And I think that for those people, there are plenty of uh, great choices on the market as well that will maybe match your budget. But for the people who do have it in their budget, for the people who need a light that's rugged, that's uh, long-lasting, that is a professional light all around, I know that if you spend the money on this light, you're not gonna regret it. It's definitely high quality, it's definitely reliable, it's definitely rugged and well-made. Uh, Pilot Cine put a lot of thought and effort into developing this light for professional videographers, cinematographers, YouTubers, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, this is a very high grade light, and although it is not the cheapest on the market, I think it is well deserving of the price tag if that's in your budget. And again, you've got app control. And for now, the app, if you've looked at my RX1 review quite a while back, their little smaller pocket light, uh, the app is similar in a lot of ways to that. It's, it's almost the same. I know there is a little bit of expanded uh, functionality to it, but it has a lot in it originally, and it still does have a lot built into there. It's one of the better, easier, and more full-featured apps on the market. And it's only going to get better uh, from now on, especially in uh, paired together with this RX50. There's going to be things that this light can do together with that app that are just going to be amazing. So I, I do hope to make another video specifically about that app, uh, hopefully soon. But whenever uh, those other extra features are fully developed, bug-free, and ready to go, I will um, make that. Until then, if you have any questions, let me know down below, and I will do my best to get back to you. Life has been crazy, and I'm sorry if I haven't been responding to comments quite as much recently. I will do my best to get back to you. Um, so let me know down there if you have any questions or anything that you want to see in the future regarding this light. Otherwise, if you liked the video or found it helpful, please do consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more in the future, and as always, thank you for watching.